today, Mr. Terry Kohler, the wedge guy, the one and only. He's a fourth generation Texan and graduate of Texas A&M University. Over his 40 year career in the golf industry, he's created over 100 putters, putter design sets of irons and drivers. And in 2014, put together the team that reintroduced the Ben Hogan brand of golf's equipment industry, served as the CEO of that venture. But his passion and most compelling work has been in the wedge category for over 30 years. Since 2018, Terry has served as the chairman and director of innovation for Edison Golf, where he continues to push the envelope in high performance wedge design. Since he first patented his Kohler Soul in the early 1990s, he has been challenging conventional wisdom reflected in tour design wedges that have traditionally defined the category. And I can personally attest, Terry um, was kind enough to send me some early prototypes of the Edison wedges and um, without a doubt, the best looking, um, the best feeling, and the best setup just when when you stand over a wedge, um, you know, how it how it lies. Um, and Terry can speak way way more articulately articulately than I can on this, but just had just had an amazing feel and setup that um, you know I was kind of blown away with and and I instantly knew um, you know why Terry is known as the wedge guy in the industry and the go-to. Um, so just first off, Terry, um, thanks for being on the Encore podcast. And I, I, we want to chat wedges today, all things wedges for, for the Encore listeners. Um, why why wedges? Why, why are you so passionate about wedges? Well, you know, Steve, thanks for having me, first of all. And um, you know, I don't literally, I don't remember life before golf. I'm at 70 years old. I, I think I've been playing a game for 67 years, maybe, you know. Um, but, you know, as I got into the golf industry about 40 years ago, um, 1980, and we were starting to see real technological development in golf clubs. You know, the metal wood came out and, and began to relegate persimmon to the closet. And then, you know, the ping answer putter in the late 60s and cavity back irons and and then hybrids came about and then drivers started getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And while all of this is going on, wedges in my collection from the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 90s, they just bore like almost no change whatsoever other than, you know, the finish and the graphics. And so that began to really puzzle me. Why is this ultra important part of your golf bag? You know, these two or three scoring clubs you're carrying, why are they just left behind in the technology world? And and so I, I really began to focus on that. And, and what's the real functional part of a wedge? I mean, you know, we talk about the grinds on the sole as a big topic. We talk about, you know, grooves and face textures now. Um, but nobody really talks about weight distribution and weight management. And that's what drives every other golf club category. You know, perimeter weighting and irons, you know, getting the CG low in drivers. And everything's about moving weight around for performance. And yet nobody's ever done it in wedges. So... I've never had an interest in doing things that other people do. So I said, you know, what what can we do to wedges to make them more playable for the average guy? Right. And and not to jump around here, but um, I read something on your site that, you know, most of the big OEMs are focused on the tour players. And you said you really wanted to focus on the amateur golfers and build a wedge that could actually help them. How much how much does that influence your your design? Uh, methodology and and um, look and feel of the Edison wedges. I'd say a hundred percent. You know the the tour players. I mean Bob Bokey, Roger Cleveland, some people. There's some great talents out there that can sit down with a with a tour player and and tweak the grind on the sole by one degree or tr- tweak this, tweak that. These guys have have extraordinary senses of feel and shot making around the greens, particularly because they spend thousands of hours learning how to hit all these shots. So when you have that much time invested in a golf club, like I said, that really hasn't changed much from, you know, these guys are wearing out wedges two or three times a year or more. And so, you know, if you kept changing the way the ball launches off the golf club, you'd send them back to square one continually to learn, you know, how to hit that 35 foot pitch shot seven different ways, you know, that they can do. So I said, you know, but the the recreational golfer is suffering by this. I mean, if you look at, I mean, your world, the golf ball technology bears no resemblance to the rubber band golf balls that we had, you know, just 15, 20 years ago. So, you know, I think that you can't change performance of a golf club without changing the way it's constructed, the way it's built, where the weight is. 
Um, you know, I can't make a putter look like an 8802 and perform like one of these big spaceship mallets. I mean, it's just physically impossible. So, you know, I'd said, you know, what 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 I observe in tour players, and I've had great fortune in my career to work with Ben Crenshaw, and Tom Kite, Justin Leonard, and Paul Ezinger, and a bunch of guys. And when you look at their wedges, you've got a like a dime-sized spot worn in the face around the second to the fifth groove. Because they know that's where that golf club is optimized. But in the thousands of wedges I've examined from players like you and me, good low single digit handicappers to 15, 20, we have a silver dollar size wear pattern and it's a higher in the face than that. And right. our, my robotic testing has proven that when you get that impact up, up a little higher in the face, the conventional tour design wedge loses 15 to 20 percent of its smash factor so that's why they get that that shot that pops up and it doesn't go anywhere and it doesn't have much spin so you know people aren't going to go spend thousands of hours learning how to hit wedges so my approach was very simple why don't i build a wedge where the mass is surrounding the area where the golfer is likely to hit the golf ball rather than where the tour pro hits it so it really is kind of that simple and then that complex to get there but the premise is very simple and was that um, just to dig into that a little bit deeper? Was that the the foundation of the Kohler Soul patents that you filed, or was that is that a more recent um, kind of uh, maneuver in how you've thought about wedges? Well, the Soul design I came up with in actually on a trip to Scotland in 1990, and I had been mainly in putters at that time, and I started thinking about wedges more and more. What can I do to improve wedges and one of the things that at about that time people were starting to proliferate these different grinds and this kind of thing and 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 it dawned on me it's like i don't know what my next wedge lie is going to look like i don't know if it's going to be soft or firm or i don't know if it's going to be tight or fluffy and i don't know what the bunker sand is going to be like so how can i create a soul that really doesn't care what the lie is it really doesn't care what your what your swing path is because we all take shallow divots sometimes, deeper divots sometimes, depends on the, you know, I mean, we're recreational golfers. We don't do this right. for a living. Um, so I created the sole, the Kaler sole, with a with a high bounce in the front portion of the sole and then a lower bounce in the back portion. So the, the sole is just going to work for whatever turf you encounter, for whatever swing path. It has characteristics of a high bounce and a low bounce all built into the same golf club. So you can take that, that club with the sole on it and you know your shot on hole number three you got over by the cart path where people walk and it's tight and it's bare and this club's going to act like a low bounce wedge which is what you would need for that but then three holes later you miss the green over on the on the far side from the golf path and where the water from the green runs off and it's softer and it's maybe a little bushier over there well you know, you've, you've got a totally different situation, but you've got the same wedge in your hand. So what I wanted to do is create a sole design that's forgiving of the kind of turf you've encountered and the kind of swing you've made. Because, you know, amateur golfers are carrying two, three, four wedges, and they're buying a new set of wedges every two, three, four years. The tour player, if conditions change, he gets to go into the tour trailer and get wedges with a little more bounce or a little less bounce. And, you know, they're all there for him. But the rest of us, hey, what we bought's got to work for us for the next three years. So that right. was kind of the driving force. And then that got me into the whole realm of what about the rest of the wedge head? And touching on, you mentioned bounce. Um, you know, it, I think it's it's a confusing topic for a lot of amateur golfers trying to understand um you know that they might know they're they're due for an upgrade they want a new set of wedges um you know besides besides buying an edison um which which we know they should do um how should they think about bounce and some of these other other elements of the construction of the wedge for um for their games what's what's the best way to to approach it well from let's come back to bounce but you know in in the world of wedges you know every major manufacturer has a line of wedges and if you look at them objectively and look past the graphics on the golf club they all basically are the same golf club whether it's brand a brand b brand c recently they've all started putting a little more mass high in the blade 
they're almost where I was in 1998 with the line I had back then, but they're not quite there, not even close to where we are with Edison. But but they realize they're they're sneaking a little mass up higher in the golf club, but because of their tour players, as I mentioned, they've got to do that very gradually. Whereas I had the the privilege and the opportunity to just, you know, go all the way to where I thought it ought to go in one one measure. But bounce is your friend in a wedge. I mean, the, the sole of the wedge is what gives it its name. It's a it's a wedge. You wedge the club between the ball and the earth. And so it's got to have some bounce to reject that club out. Well, then you get into the nuances of low bounce and high bounce and wide soles and narrow soles. And, you know, short of having a sole like I designed, the Keller sole, which has got both high and low bounce in it, you really need to take that golf club to the golf course and and play two or three rounds with it. And if the store or the place won't let you do that, then don't buy that golf club. There's no way you can look at a club in the store and tell, is it going to fit me through three or four rounds of golf? Excuse me, three or four rounds of golf where I'm going to I'm going to face every kind of lie imaginable and I'm going to make every kind of swing imaginable. How did that golf club do in that kind of a test? And, you know, it's one thing that I insisted on doing when we created Edison was we have a no risk trial. You get to let us build you one, your loft, your shaft, whatever, and put it in your bag for 30 days. Not one session at the range, but you need to go play this thing. You need to hit the different kind of shots that you're going to face in a week in, week out golf life. So, you know, bounce is your friend. There's no right or wrong formula. I, I don't agree with, with the, the industry's concept of fitting bounce. I mean, again, how do I fit something that's constantly changing? And turf conditions and swing paths are constantly changing. So I just have a hard time believing you can fit something that's constantly changing. Well, I love I love that trial program you got. And that's um, I think that's a testament to the quality and confidence that you put in in your wedge designs product. Um, so that's awesome. You, you mentioned the, the privilege of being able to design wedges for amateurs and not not having to worry about um, the professionals like the bigger OEMs. Um, there's been kind of an explosion in the boutique wedge, artisan wedge category. Um, I assume you see that as a good thing, um, but maybe help us understand how Edison fits in to that category and, and how you stand out. Well, I think the, the and there's boutiques in a lot of different categories and particularly in wedges. And, you know, I think a lot of these boutiques, they're, they're trying to offer a, a very fine tuned service of, you know, bending, you know, or, or, or polishing the grind exactly the way this person wants it or that person wants it. And, but I, I don't think that's the part of the wedge you can really work on for the reasons I've already explained. But I think where Edison fits into the landscape is we're not a gimmick wedge. There are some big wide sole wedges on the market that are kind of one trick ponies there. You know, if you have super soft sand, it's the hardest bunker there is, which is why you never see super soft sand on the PGA Tour. It's always nice packed sand so they can hit those wonderful shots. And I mean, they have great skills, but when you play the same sand in every tournament week in, week out, you can develop skills. Whereas you and I, we don't even have the same sand at two spots in that bunker, right? It's firm over on this end of the bunker and fluffy there. But I think that that the 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 boutique, if you will, I, I really consider us not a boutique. We're just an upstart challenger brand that's challenging the entire industry status quo of, you know, 1% of golfers are playing a tour blade style iron and 98% of them are trying to play a tour design wedge. I can tell you from robotic testing, a tour blade nine iron is more forgiving than any of the tour wedges out there. And people go, well, I'm not good enough to play blades, but I'm going to try to play this tour wedge. And, but, you know, I realize I'm taking on, you know, 40 years of status quo of market leadership and dominant brands, but that's why I offer a no risk trial. I mean, this is a different golf club. It's going to look a little different. It's going to feel very different. It's forged. It's thick. Uh, the, the sole design, you need a little warm up period. You need two or three rounds of golf typically, you know, to really understand and see what this golf club is going to do. And, to me, it's like your cavity back iron and your hybrid and your big driver. It's, wow, I got away with that one. You know, I mean, if you hit it perfect all the time, it doesn't matter what you play. But but it's the shot. And, and talking about the PGA Tour, I mean, certainly these guys could learn how to use my wedges and they would. And it, I think that a lot of them would benefit. I mean, it's every tournament you watch on TV. Somewhere in the tournament, a tour player hits a wedge shot that comes up 50 feet short. 
Well, those guys don't misjudge a distance by 50 feet, but the camera will go in and they'll do a slow-mo of the impact and the announcer will say, well, oh, you can see he caught it high on the face. And when you do that with a wedge, you don't get the distance. And my driving question is, why is that acceptable? It's not acceptable on my driver or my irons or my putter. Why is that big distance loss for a half inch miss acceptable in my wedge game where distance is more crucial? So. Oh, that's that's really, uh, really fascinating. And, and I'm sensing a um, kind of a maverick personality where, you know, same as Encore, right? We're, we're, we're both challenging the big uh, the big brands, the established players. Um, has that always been kind of a, a personality trait of yours, Terry? Yeah, I've never had any interest in doing things like everybody else does it. And, uh, you know, and kudos to you guys. I mean, the products you turn out are phenomenal and people are figuring it out. And that's what's happening with us. And, you know, it, I mean, there are a lot of people that are willing to copy other people's work. And I'm just never if I can't add something and contribute something to this great game that's given me a wonderful life. I mean, great relationship with my father, my brother, most of my friends, either fishing friends or golf friends. And, you know, if I can give something back, if I can help that amateur golfer, that recreational golfer be a little better inside scoring range. And, you know, a lot of people don't realize how important wedge play is, but I was doing some research the other day for a blog I was writing. You realize that the PGA Tour as a whole is over par outside nine iron range? This the best players in the world. They do not beat the golf courses from seven iron, eight iron, five iron range. They don't. I mean, they're you know, their scoring is happening with nine irons and wedges in their hands. And, and it's the same whether you're trying to break 90 or 100. And we think the more you know about wedges, you're more you're going to realize what we're doing is the right thing. And we have an online process called Wedge Fit Scoring Range Analysis. And uh, it's a little interrogation, if you will, an interactive exchange with the golfer. We learn what kind of skill sets they have, what kind of irons are in their bag, what kind of shaft they're playing, what kind of wedges they're playing. And Wedge Fit will spit out a a, a recommendation of these are the lofts and the shaft and grips that we think will work best for you. But we invite everybody to call our wedge fit team and, and talk to us. I mean, it, I'd love to be able to talk to every customer out there and, you know, and we'll, we can get you a better fit if we talk to you, but our wedge fit analysis, I mean, people are very pleased with, you know, we can, we can get you pretty dead on with, with the kind of wedges and, you know, half the golfers out there have been custom fit for irons now. So they know they're, you know, quarter inch long, two degrees flat or whatever it is. And we want to build your wedges to, I use the term seamless transition. So from your eight iron, your nine iron, your pitching wedge into your Edison wedges, you should have no break in there. I mean, the shafts should perform the same, the club should weigh the same. And people don't give thought to that. I, I see golfers at my golf course, we have a lot of senior players and I see them all the time. They've got 70, 80, 90 gram graphite in their irons and they've got 130 gram steel shaft in their wedges. There's a horrible disconnect there. You, you can't put the same swing on those two golf clubs when they're 50 grams different in weight. Well, good points and, and certainly um, such a cool differentiator, right, for, for customers to be able to reach out to, you know, someone like yourself with um, decades of experience and expertise and be able to um, literally talk to the guy making their wedges um, with patents and, um, you know, the the – expertise to be able to guide them so um cool story to have when you're out on the course with your buddies using the edison wedges i wanted to ask you how did you come up with that name i really i really liked it when when we first talked um and have an idea where it came from but for our listeners can you can you let them well, know my my business partner chief operating officer trace mcdougall has been a longtime industry friend and trace is an engineer and and mathematician and Thomas Edison just happened to be one of his kind of personal heroes like Ben Hogan was mine. And um, so we were kicking around names for the company going through this massive list and trying to drill down. And we actually came up with, with what we were about before we came up with the name. And, and we settled on that what this company is about is about bold ideas, you know, challenging status quo, challenging 40 years of tradition for the pursuit of better golf shots. So it's bold ideas, better golf shots. And so that kind of naturally led to a light bulb there and 
Trace chimes in, you know, well, that's, you know, Edison Golf. I mean, he's the light bulb guy, right? So, and and Edison, as Trace, and you've kind of uncovered in this podcast, Trace has known me for a long time, and I'm always full of ideas, and I'm, I'm never accepting status quo, and, you know, I'm willing to throw away prototypes that don't work like I wanted them to, and and he said, you know, that's the way Thomas Edison was. I mean, one of his famous quotes was, you know, I didn't fail. I just invented another way to not invent the light bulb, you know. <laughs> so, so and, and I went through a lot of prototypes before we settled on this Edison Forge wedge appearance and, and, and weighting and everything. And, uh, you know, we we saw just outstanding performance from this pro- this particular model and prototype. And so that's the one we went with for our first product. It's awesome. I love it. And, you know, what what a great uh, entrepreneurial story um, trail, trailblazer that he was. And just just like uh, Elon, right, and and uh, Tesla, his uh, competition with uh, Edison, I think um, you're, you're going to be uh, on the same same level as Elon Musk soon. Um, oh, that'd, be, that'd be neat. <laughs> <laughs> congrats. No, congrats on everything. And I know um, you were gracious to put together a nice little offer for Encore listeners um, with um, using the code Bureau, um, of course, the name of our, our latest tour ball and 22. So Bureau 22, um, V-E-R-O 22 for the code, and that's 10% off um, on the Edison wedges. And how, how can our listeners best find you? I mean, the easiest thing is just go to edisonwedges.com, um, you know, pretty straightforward, um, and, and spend some time there. I mean, you're going to see we're willing to tell you more about wedges than anybody because we got a bigger story than anybody. Um, and, you know, I set up this code, Vero, because I personally play your Vero X1 ball. I have been since you came out with it and was playing the Elixir before that. And, you know, I, I live down here on the Texas coast, and, I mean, I – I've told you this, and I'll keep this. I mean, this is the best wind ball I've ever played. And we play 20, 25 on our wind more often than not. And so how a ball behaves in the wind is super crucial to me. But the ability to flight it down, to flight it up, to keep it in the air downwind, to, you know, to hit drives into the wind that are, you know, 15, 20 yards past the guys that I drive it with and on a normal hole or normal day. So, um, you know, and I, and I love the way the barrel ball spins with our wedges around the greens. I mean, it doesn't leave anything, you know, in the tank, so to speak. So I thought Vero 22 would be a great, uh, great code for you guys. And it's 10% off. We don't offer that kind of discount. We're not a discount company, uh, but because of the wonderful relationship I've had with you all. And, you know, we thought that'd be a great way to introduce your, your listeners to wedges that are as good in our category as your ball is in yours. Well, that's that's awesome, and, and Terry, just just phenomenal having you on with um, the expertise you bring to the wedge category, the decades of experience and innovation. Uh, thank you for for the testimonial on the bureau, um, Encore, Edison, um, two two companies to be reckoned with. So, encourage listeners, please check out Terry's uh, wedges. Check out his website, Edison.com, and um, Yes, thanks, thanks, thanks for being on, Terry. All right, well, thank you a lot, Steve, and look forward to doing it again sometime. It's a oh. deep subject; we can spend a lot of time. Oh God, yeah, I know. Amazing stuff. Thank you for um, for all the great uh, information you you've given our listeners, and um, be well. From Buffalo. Hey, thanks, to- Steve. See ya. Right. Cheers. <laughs>